Well, good morning. Good morning. So we have to do that, and then I'll cut the video, and it'll look like I've been up here the whole time. So it's great. And nobody will know as long as I don't say anything. So today's a different kind of message. What I did is, um, you know, we have so many amazing women, and there's so many amazing women in the Bible. And too often we just tell stories about the women in the Bible and not really show a practical thing. So I hope today to do that. And the first, I've got, I actually have 12 points today. But it's really six points. And don't worry, I'll get done on time. I saw Tom look at his watch, okay? But, but the first point is really for the ladies, for all the amazing women in here. We have some amazing women. But the second one is for anyone who loves an amazing woman, whether you're a husband or, or whether you're a friend of an amazing woman, here's the thing. Women, I need you to know something before we even start this sermon. Men are clueless. We, we, need, we need more than hints. We need obvious statements. And so I'm going to give you some obvious statements. But first, I'm going to start with the most important things today. Some jokes. <laughs> Sunday school teacher says, tell me, Johnny, do you pray before eating? No, ma'am, I don't have to. My mom's a good cook. <laughs> My mother was a master of guilt trips. She showed me one day a photo of herself waiting by the phone that never rings. Mom, I call all the time, I said. If you had voicemail, you would know. So soon, my brother installed it for her. When I called the next time, I got her message. If you were a salesperson, press 1. If you're a friend, press 2. If you're my daughter who never calls, press 911 because the shock will give me a heart attack. <laughs> Now, this one has to do with texting. Last night, they didn't get this. I'll just be honest with you. So I'm going to say it slowly. You can process it. All right? So a mom says to her son, what does IDK, comma, L-Y, comma, and T-T-Y-L mean? The son says, I don't know. Love you. Talk to you later. Mom says, okay, I'll ask your sister. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon had a couple of tweets that people got from their moms. One mom texted her son and said, Can you come over? I wanted you to take a selfie of me. <laughs> Last but not least, my favorite text. I once got a text from my mom where you're amazing, autocorrected to, you're adopted. <laughs> Now you're going through all the autocorrect stories you have that are funnier than that one, I know, okay. So ladies, I want you to know we will honor you today no matter whether your label is officially mom or not. You have a place of ministry in this church. Jesus and Paul's ministry were not only supported, but they were a part of the ministry in ancient times, which was not allowed at that time, by the way. If you are a mom, a grandma, an aunt, a friend, a neighbor, some of you didn't have a good examples of moms, but hopefully somebody stepped into your life that showed you what a mom should be. And ladies, I want you to know no matter who you are, you are valuable, you are important, and Jesus always, always honored women, and we are going to honor you today. So as I was looking at this message, I, um, I was on Facebook. I know that's a shocker to some of you. Because there's only a billion people on Facebook. So I was on Facebook one day, and one of my former students, who is now in her 30s, she is an amazing person. She is a principal of a school. She has three or four children of her own. I always joke with Neil, I can't keep count, so I just say, Neil has a bunch of kids, and he's one of them, and I have no idea how many, like 12 now. And um, she has kids. She's an amazing wife, mom to those kids. She posted the other day, oh, one other thing. She just came out of uh, uh, cancer treatments just six months ago, okay? So she went through a year of cancer treatment. She's in remission now. And here's what she posts. I finished my to-do list. I feel successful today. Now, you may think, oh, well, that's innocuous. That's no big deal. But as I read that, I thought, I hope she feels successful every day. This is a woman who cares about me. If she was never a principal, 
she would still be a wonderful person. If she never had children, she would still be a wonderful person. If she never had a husband, she would be even a more. <laughs> I know her husband too. They were both in my youth group. I did their wedding. They were one of the first weddings I did. But the truth is, without all of that, she's still an amazing person. But ladies, if you're not careful, there will be times that this world will make you feel less than other people. And today I want you to know, you do not have to feel less than others. So let me give you some common things. I, I talked to several women about this. I did a little bit of research. And I also talked to our counselor, Sandra, um, who works out of our church, who, who just gave me a little bit of advice and things to add to this. Okay, Number one. They stop speaking up for their needs. They lose their voice. If you ever seen Runaway Bride, that's a good example. She can't even remember. Sandra Bullock cannot even remember what eggs she wants because she just defers to everybody. Loses her voice. Sandra Bullock loses her voice, yeah, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know what's going on, baby. Number two. Number two, they, hey, we're training a new team. They're doing a great job. Are they doing a great job? We only know this you. Now, I hate to say this, but usually we have a woman running them. <laughs> I owe you lunch now. That was really bad. It was just too funny to not pass. All right, number two, they compare their family to the perfect family. And you gotta understand, there is no perfect family. If you think your family's perfect, cover your ears for a second, because I'm, I'm gonna tell everybody else the truth, okay? Every family's dysfunctional. You, are dis you, you have dysfunction. You do something, you may even think they're normal. But if I came over to your house, I'd be like, oh. You, what? You do? God bless you. All right, number three. They lose their identity in their children or their spouse. They forget who they are. They forget who they are. So, you know, that's why we have to take time for yourself. You have to take time for yourself. It's okay to be separate sometimes. I know. Some of you are like, I need to be more separate. All right. Number four, <laughs> they compare their talents to others and try to be like them. Okay. This happens all the time. I, I get ladies, they'll come in and they'll say, you know, I wish I was more organized. Okay. And then the organized lady will say to me, I wish I was more relaxed. Okay. You can't be both. Let me just, I've noticed that doesn't, you usually organized and relaxed. Don't go, I mean, Cherie, maybe. But, but those two usually don't go hand in hand. You know, typically if you're an organized person, you kind of freak out over stuff. And if you're a relaxed person, you're like, eh, it'll happen, right? And so it's very difficult. And we a lot of times desire something that we're not good at, okay? Um, you know, if you're a duck and you want to climb trees, it's not a good mix, all right? <laughs> Number four, I already did. Number five, they think that to-do list defines success. They can do it all. Or as I like to say, they are Anjali. Now you have no idea when I, why I said Anjali. You especially have no idea. You think of Angelina Jolie. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, there was a perfume in the 70s. The 70s was a time before computers, just so you guys know. Our computers, well, anyway. They actually used chalk in schools back then. This stuff, and it got all over the math teacher. Anyway, um... But remember, it said it was a lady, and she sang this song about that she can go and earn the bacon and fry it up in the pan, and let her never, her husband will never forget he's a man. And I'm like, yeah, and you smell like bacon too. But anyway, <laughs> right? And you can do it all. And some of us think we can just do everything. You can't do everything. Number six, they don't feel like they make a difference in the world. By the way, we all struggle with that, men and women. So let's look at some things today. How to be or bless an amazing woman. So, so the part A is for how to be, and part B is for how to bless an amazing woman, okay? Number one, care for others and don't be afraid to ask for help. Care for others, but don't be afraid to ask for help. And then if you are the one who loves this woman, then encourage her to ask for help. And guys, you ready? And help. Hey, feel free to ask for help. Oh, I'm not helping. I just was encouraging you. So we're gonna look at some different women. First, we're gonna look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. John chapter 2, here it goes. Jesus' first miracle. On the third day, a wedding. By the way, weddings went on. Parties went on for days for weddings. Some of you were like, we've got to go back there. Then the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. 
When the line was gone, I'm, I'm guessing there's two Baptist churches in the country reading this passage today. <laughs> when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother, listen, listen, it doesn't say ask, said to him, Hey, Jesus, they have no more wine. What a great mom. She doesn't even have to ask a question. She just says a fact. She looks at him and goes, son, there's no wine. Now, here's what's wild, okay? She just points to whatever was empty and says, hey, uh, son, no more wine. Now, here's the deal, okay? Theologians struggle with this. This was Jesus' first public miracle. How did she know he could make wine? Was there a night that she came home and she was having a rough night? And she's sitting at the table with her water glass and she says, boy, it's been a rough day. And Jesus says, hey, mom, let me just see that for a second. Okay, here you go. I mean, something happened. There was a time that all of a sudden wine appeared. This wasn't new to her. It's like, oh, yeah, remember what you did before? They're out of wine. Yeah, remember that time I bought the big things of water home and we were going to have water for a month and all of a sudden? <laughs> they got to realize at that time, uh, uh, water was not even always safe to drink. And they didn't, and, and Paul, even in scriptures, said, take a little wine for your stomach, which some of you have taken way too seriously. Um, <laughs> a little wine for your stomach doesn't say take a bottle, all right? But she went out of her way. Some of you... Feel like you can't ask for help. And I'm going to give you two impressions from this next picture. Some of the men saw this and said, that's awesome. <laughs> and most of the women said, that's awful. But some of you feel like that. I've had at least two or three different women tell me that they end up washing all the dishes at their office. Now, we're going to do a boundary series in the fall, but, I, but I've thought of a couple of different answers for you. One of them involves you taking the dishes back to the desks of whoever did it, but wait till Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock and put it on their desk for the weekend. That's passive aggressive, really not a boundary thing. I am a professional. If you need any passive aggressive advice, please come see me. I do have a degree. So here's what I want you to know. It is okay, it is okay to ask for what you need or express your weakness. Ladies, it's okay to say you have a need. And let me tell you something about men. If you don't express it, they don't know. And I'm not talking hints. I'm not talking, oh, well, I'm sure tired of doing these dishes because you're going to get a, well, that's just too bad. Wow, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry you're tired. Boy, it'd be nice to have somebody helping me. Gosh, it really would be nice for you to have somebody helping you, wouldn't it? Would you come and help me with the dishes? You want me to help you? I mean, that's how. Does anybody feel like that's out of place in there? Okay, maybe you're more clueless. Number two, discover and encourage the talents in your family. Give resources to them. And then remind her of her strengths and her family's strengths. Because when you're comparing, when you think you should compare yourself to everybody else, what will happen is you will find yourself thinking your family's terrible and everybody else's family is awesome. Instead, look for the strengths. Look for the things that your kids are different at. Look for the things that they're good at. My mom was a professional at this. John 2, 4 and 5. Dear woman. By the way, he doesn't just say woman. It's not woman like in a negative sense. It basically is like a really endearing term. Probably rarely used at this time. And he's basically saying, you know, wonderful mom. <laughs> Why do you involve me? <laughs> Jesus replied, my time is not going to come. So Jesus basically looks at her and goes, you know, I really don't want to do this. Listen to what happens next. Do whatever he tells you. So his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. <laughs> You're not getting out of this today, right? <laughs> she encouraged Jesus and she got him the resources he needed. Do you have a child that has a talent? Go out of your way to get them the resources they need, the people they need in their life. Look for ways to get them. I'm not just talking about financial things. I'm talking to go out of your way. If you can't help them with math, get somebody to help them with math. If, you're having, if they're struggling in an area, get them some help in that area. If they're succeeding in an area, nurture that in them. Some of us feel like this, though. This is my brother and I as children, and this is my mom. 
My brother and I invented a game called Feet Versus Hands. Let me tell you what that looked like. I would sit on the couch. My brother would run across the living room towards me. And his idea, his plan was to slap me in the face. And my plan was to kick him in the face. That was the game. Go. So that's what we did over and over again. Till we, Mom, is this a lie? This is a true story, isn't it? She's here to verify this. And she would walk in. And by that time, we had gotten tired of feet versus hands. And now we were doing fist versus face. Right? So we're on the floor just punching each other. And she would come in. Oh, what are you guys doing? And, and then she was just kind. Boys. <laughs> Boys, you... Boys, you really need to just relax. Why don't you both take, let's take some deep breathing exercises. <laughs> okay, that's not what happened, but she did a great job. <laughs> Instead of comparing your family, her laugh is the best part of this whole sermon. <laughs> Instead of comparing your family, encourage their gifts. We spend so much time comparing our lives to everybody else's lives that we get depressed. Stop it. Stop it. Do you know how many pictures I had to yell at my kids before they got in? Get over here now! We're going to take a picture at the beach and everybody has... Okay, now you can leave. Is that good enough for you? Right. Number three. Remember, this is the most important of the whole sermon. If you forget everything else, remember this. You're, you're valuable as a person. And then what you can do, remind them of their value. Tell the women in your life and all the people, all the children, all the people in your life, that they matter not just because of what they do. Don't make it performance oriented. Not just thanks for all you do. Thanks for who you are. Talk about character. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being loving. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being sensitive. Thank you for being caring. Not just thank you that you did this for me. That's performance. Thank them for who they are and remind them of who they are. And you look in the Old Testament, there's a queen named Esther. And there was a command put out to kill all the Jews. Well, she forgot she was a Jew. So she's in the castle and Mordecai, she says, I'm not going to go to the king. He'll kill me. And Mordecai basically tells her, you're going to get killed anyway. And maybe God puts you there for such a time, for just a time like this. And here's what it says in the Bible. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Don't think that because you're in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. What does he do? He reminds her, you know you're Jewish, right? You, you know you're a child of God. You, you know that you worship a God, a powerful God. He's put you here for just this reason. Then she says, go gather together. The Jews are in Susa and fast for me. That's the idea. Pray for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, night and day. And I and my attendants will do as you do. When this is done, I'll go to the king, even though it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. You know what he did? He reminded her, maybe you're right where you're supposed to be. Ladies, let me tell you something. You may feel like a failure. You may feel like you don't have a purpose. You may feel like the things that you do don't matter. You may be frustrated and irritated and wish you were somewhere or someone else. But I want you to know something. God has you right where he has you for a purpose. And he will use you right where you are if you will let him. You may think, but I'm not talented, but I'm not this, but I'm not that, but I'm not this. God made you who you are. You may not want to be who you are right now. He didn't give you that option. He made you who you are and he placed you where you are. Even if right now that place is uncomfortable, he has put you there and he loves you right where you are. And instead of seeing Jesus scold you, here's what I want you to see. Some of you need to quit seeing God yelling at you and telling you to do better and telling you to perform and telling you to measure up and telling you you got to do this and you got to do that. And you just need to realize if you're a believer, you are a child of the king. He is your Abba father. That means daddy. He is your daddy that loves you. You may have had a horrible dad and you may have had a horrible childhood. And yet you have a God who absolutely loves you, not because you do anything, but because he loves you just like you that's what you need to remember. That's the next point. God loves you for who you are. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. So the only person that doesn't apply to here is Bob because he's born in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> That's true. You were born in Roswell, right, Bob? Area 51. 
Area 51. He really was. He really was. He says it to be funny, but it's really true, and it should scare you a little. But everybody else in the room, God loved the world. And by the way, Bob, God loves you, regardless of what I say. I've tried to talk him out of it, but he keeps saying it. Number four, don't compare yourselves to others. And Sandra wanted me to add, especially online others. If you want to remind a woman when she compares, remind her of her beauty and her abilities. Remind her of her character. She had a sister called Mary. This is the Mary and Martha story. Who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha, who invited Jesus to her house. Jesus had already fed 5,000. She invites Jesus to her house and she's worried about dinner. Give him a fish. You'll have fish and chips. I mean, it's amazing. Right? Distracted by all the preparation. By the way, when distracted here means to have your face turned around. It meant that she went like this. You all know that person. You know what I'm talking about. You, when I made that face, you went, I know them. If you don't know them, it's you. Okay, so she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister's left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Quit comparing. Quit expecting other people to be perfect like you, and you quit trying to be perfect. Here's what's happening in our world. There are girls and guys now. Posting every day, do you think I'm pretty? Do you think I'm, and seeing what kind of response. And here's what's happening. Cruelty is happening. Because they're trying to get defined by the world and instead we need to define by God. Beware of perfection self-talk and instead be grateful for the moments. Be grateful for the moments. It's easy. Don't expect perfection. Lower the bar. Lower the bar. Number five. Remember... The goal is love and worship, not just the task. We get so busy trying to complete a task that we don't love the people near us. Martha was so busy trying to get the task that she forgot Jesus is in her house and could make the food himself. And she invited him over. Don't get mad. Don't invite me over and then get mad that I'm right there. Hey, come to my house. I can't believe I don't have food for you. Remind her that she is more important than all she does or doesn't do. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it won't be taken away from her. Ladies told me this is their favorite picture of the day. Give her a break. Do some dishes. Pick up your socks. If you can't pick up your socks, women start throwing them away. Yeah, my mom did that. My dad went and bought more socks. I'll do the dishes. Hey, mom, some of you need to make a chore list. Quit trying to do it all. Be it all. By the way, if, you're, if you don't teach your kids to do chores, they'll stay at home forever. <laughs> some of you are like, we are putting the chore list up starting today. Why do you think my boys are mowing the grass now at my house? Kicking them out as soon as we can. All right. <laughs> Take time to worship and rest. Take time to worship and rest. It's your most important thing. And then number six. I had a great quote, but we're not reading that. Number six. Remember that God multiplies, and I love this, your small contribution. You may feel insignificant that you don't matter. Your small contribution is huge. Let her know how much she has blessed you and others. If you have a woman in your life that's not even a mom, today's a great day to call her and remind her of how special she is. Now, we're going to kind of read through the ending of the story. I'm going to kind of skip through it, so just be ready here, okay? Here's what happens. Back to the story of Jesus and Mary at the wedding, Jesus' first miracle. Nearby stood six water jars, the kind used from Jew, by Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. So we're talking up to 180 gallons of water. The servants filled them to the top. If you read the rest of the story, they filled them to the top. They took a scoop of it to the Head guy at the wedding, he said, you save the best wine for now, which is really cool because it means that Jesus even makes the best wine. Where's Cherie? I don't know what it would be called, like Messiah's Vineyards. I'm not sure. I've been working on a name. Jesus' jambalaya? I don't know. Anyway. He makes it into the finest wine, and then it says, Jesus... This is the first of his miraculous signs, the very end of the verses. 
Jesus performed at Canaan Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. He revealed his glory. Why? Because his mom asked him. His mom said, can you take care of these people? Now, obviously it was God's plan. But she was part of that. Recognize that God always multiplies the little given in faith. Now, we're going to leave this up for a second because I want to tell you a story. My great-grandmother... Might be my great great grandmother actually. Never had any money, never had very much money, never owned a house. She actually moved from house to house and didn't have very much. But every house she would live in, whether she left, lived with relatives or whether she lived on her own, every house she would live, live in in Georgia, she would take two pecans and she would plant them in the yard. And my aunt one time asked her, she said, Grandma, why do you do that? You'll never see the fruit of that. This is about 100 years ago. You'll never, that she would do this. You'll never see the fruit of that. She said, but somebody will. I wonder today how many homes in Georgia have two pecan trees. And today as somebody's walking out the door, a pecan falls in front of them and they pick it up and they get to eat it because of a seed she planted. Listen. Even more importantly, you never know what that little dose of encouragement, what that little helping a child with their homework, what that little going out of your way to bless a woman who's been in your life. Maybe you're not a mom today, but you've gone out of your way to be a blessing to somebody, to help somebody who needs it. You never know how that seed is going to impact generations of people down the road. We have four generations of people who grandma, great-grandma has been praying for these kids for years and years. They're all sitting here in church today together. You never know when you plant that seed how God is going to use it. The enemy doesn't want you to keep planting. He wants you to feel insignificant and that you don't matter and the things that you do don't matter. But I want you to know every single kindness and love and act of care that you do for Jesus matters and it plants a seed for tomorrow. And my prayer is generation after generation will look at you and call you blessed. We're blessed as a church because we have so many amazing women in our church who serve and love and care and show us what it means to be kind. We're extra blessed because my mom was part of our church. So. And she says to me all the time, make sure you tell them how to know Jesus. And so at the end of every service, I say to you, if you're here today and you're not a believer, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I will be here after the service. And you can say, Eric, I know about Jesus, but I've never given in my life. I don't know about Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. How can I surrender? How can I become a Christian? And you can do that before you leave here today. If you're here today and you're a mom who thinks you're less than, if you're not a mom, but you're a lady and you think you're less than because somebody else has kids, I want you to know you are not less than. God has you exactly where he has you for a purpose and he will use you and he will continue to use you. Just keep planting the seeds. He absolutely loves you. Just be his. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. I thank you for moms. I thank you for ladies. I thank you for all the wonderful people in our church and all of the examples in the scripture of so many women who pursued and loved and cared. And Father, they were just women full of character. And Lord, I thank you that in our very midst, there's so many women like that. And Father, I pray for that one today who maybe didn't have a good example of that as a mom. I pray, Father, they would remember the other women that came into their lives to show them what a good mom was like. Father, I pray for the hearts that are hurting today and grieving. I want to pray that you would bless them with good memories and all the kindness and love and the comfort today that can only come through the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, too, that today we could go out of our way, not to just love our own moms, but, Father, to go out of our way today to show so many women that they matter and that we care for them today, and to be a blessing in this community. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our time of offering now. We've got a little while before the butterfly release. We've got about 15 minutes. But um, we're going to have our offering now. If you need to pray after church, I'll be here. And we've got a great closing song today. Thanks.